So those of you all with the QR code, you can click this link. You can get some, some practice on that. So I would always suggest maybe doing that before blindly going in and taking the test. The next one is for Coyote Algebra. And again, the students must have a college algebra score. And you can click that link and that'll take you into like, I think there's four different practice tests. And then um, they do Coyote Reading. Now that one, I didn't have any specific resources for it, but anything that you're doing for, versus ACT reading prep, I think will be beneficial. It is a multiple choice test that they give for that. Um, so and then I have a little bit of a link down here that they can take a look at and see. So now this one, this next link right here, and I'm actually gonna click on it just to kind of show you all, um, and we're gonna be finishing up our session here and open up to questions. This is the ECTC dual credit webpage that you're gonna to go to. And there's gonna be all kinds of resources and everything on here. Again, you may be looking on here and you find that contact and you see Lauren Sims and her team contacts and so on. I just ask that if you have any initial questions, anything going on, please reach out to us first. Lauren and her team feel like they're part of Hardin County Schools, but they don't actually work for us. They work for the college and they not only just deal with us, they deal with all the other high schools in our region. So if you're asking a question of her, it may not be, she might give you more of a general answer versus the EC3 specific. So start with us. And if I don't have an answer, if I need to reach out to Lauren, then, then we'll do so. But this, this uh, webpage provides all kinds of resources for you all. And it's just, it's loaded with information. A lot of the things that I went over in the dual credit basics are there. Eligibility requirements, just I want to make sure that you may look on here and say, well, ECTC says this. They do. You're coming to the academy program, so you have to meet our eligibility requirements, not just what the college is looking for. Cost and scholarship, and the, as, as that cost changes, then th that information gets updated within their web page as well. Uh, dual credit pathways is always kind of cool because people will say, Oh, I didn't know that I could actually take other courses, not just pure academic courses. There's other that fall underneath there's work ready scholarship. So there are some other options in there as well. But we focus on the Associates of Arts and the Associates of Science. Those, those are the two that we focus in on in our program. Okay? And so on. And then just there, there's some orientation that we'll do later. We, we run that for our students in this program. So I've talked a lot. And I know some of you have some questions. If you do not have any questions and you want to go, this would be the time to do so. If you have questions, you want to stick around, then uh, again, you won't be rude to me. You can get up anytime you want. I use the two feet rule, so just get up and go if you need to. But I do want to open it up for questions because I know that you all have some. And um, so we'll just kind of go around the room. So yes, sir. Yep. Yeah, every, so the question is about transferability. So within our program, the courses that you take are transferable and will be transferable to any state public college in the state of Kentucky. No questions asked, okay? Yeah, out of state, that's a little bit different. Private colleges, a little bit different. Now I will tell you this, and we just had some parents leave that had some younger kids. I'll tell you that our private schools, Campbellsville, that they've been really good about um, our acceptance rate from our programs because they see a lot of students already coming with us. So it's wise for them to be sure they want to accept them because they don't want to put their students in a tough situation. So, but our, the courses in this program, transferable. Again, once they're on your permanent college record, they're yours and they'll never be taken away from you. But how they help you in that other program where you're transferring always is up to those colleges. But in our four-year public universities, in the state of Kentucky, it's seamless. So, yes, yes. When are ACT scores due? Yeah, the question about ACT scores. So ACT scores are due today. And we will, they will continue to be due tomorrow and the next day and after. So as soon as you get them, you want them. So I tell students this all the time. We have 100 seats in this program, 100 seats, OK? We are roughly about half right now, OK, roughly. So what happens? If I accept the 100th student and you are the 101 student, then you are on the outside looking in, okay? So the sooner 
the better for scores because I must have scores before I, you can be accepted. So again, I hate to put that pressure, but that is where we are at. This year, right now, we have 92 students in our program. So we didn't meet, re reach the 100. So we did have more than 100 applicants, obviously. But we then had some students that took the test several times, and then they got overwhelmed with it, and they just said, I'm done. And that's good. I mean, you don't need to wear yourself out for it. So yes? So question. I, I asked first. So are the other tests that you put on there, are those additional tests that you take in? No, it's that or the ACT. And the reason I put those others out there is because when you take the ACT, now it's the entire setting. You can't come in and just say, I just want to do math. They, you can't do that. So you've got to take the entire thing. So if you just need a math score, just take the math from ECTC and you can get it. Now I will say this, and I apologize for those people that left. They're going to miss this information. I, I'm sorry. Your transition coaches at your high school, Central Harden is Ms. Tara Wooden, North Harden is Mr. Justin Kraft, John Harden and Ms. Jennifer Cobb. Those people can allow you to take the Coyote Algebra test at your high school. They, will, they can set you up and do it. Okay. The test at the college, the first, is free. After that, if you need to take it again, you must pay. So. The, the other thing I have to say is, I think there was some confusion about the ACT, right? So I find out my daughter was free. They were like, hey, this has to be done by this certain time, right? So on her situation is that, so I think there's a communication gap when it was brief of when it needs to be taken. So she was like, let me just take it. So we scheduled it. I paid for it back in September, August. Mm -hmm. I'm not, no, I'm not sure where that communication gap came. I'm the one that came to the students, and I met with them at their home high school. If they weren't in that session, then they might have heard from somebody different. But I told all of our students in the very beginning, I mean, the ACT should be taken early and often. So again, if someone was to ask me when I should take it, I just started Algebra 2, then I would say, unless you're just super gifted in math, I would probably wait until you have a little bit more of that Algebra 2 content. So if a student just took it, you know, when was the last ACT? February. In February, you're fine. So now the next one's April 2nd. The deadline's already passed for signing, signing up for that. But there, it could be some uh, standby. You could sign up for a standby. Um, again, and if you're worried about that, then I would definitely look to this route. We do accept students, and we have numerous students that go this route. So late deadline what? Is April 12th, ACT is tomorrow. For, for late registration yeah. tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, so for Coyote, we need college algebra 14. We need a 14 on the college algebra to get in it. And, and, that, and that is, it's 14 of the 25 questions correct. So there are 25 questions on Coyote algebra. You must get 14 correct. And then what about the reading? I don't know. So it's new to me. I do know that they told me on the writing one that you have, because they have to write like a paragraph or something like that, they have to score a five. Now, I don't know what that means. But you have to score five. <laughs> so, um, yeah, sorry. That's, I'm, Lauren, do you have any other information regarding those placement tests? Scores for like the AccuPlacer or the Coyote Reading or? Yeah. Yeah. That's the taken. An English 101 with a writing. That's to, that's to take a English 101 plus a, a writing lab. We don't do that. We just do English 101. So. Okay. Okay. So after they meet on Tuesday, if there's any updates, I'll make sure that we send that out um, to your students' email addresses and the remind group if anyone's joined it. Yes, sir. They, they can take it as late as they, again, once we reach 100 students, then we will cut it off. So they could take it all the way up. Again, because they, they can sign up for FYE regardless of having those scores, and we can put them in. But FYE will start in June. So we, for us, it is beneficial to 
So we can get them all going and all on the same page by May, really. But they can sign up and they can be in our FYE class and not be accepted to this program yet and waiting for that July test score, but they could still, they could already, you know, have that FYE taken care of. We did have some students that waited and they wanted to wait and it was perfectly fine and then they didn't take FYE in the summer, they took it in the fall with us. So we did allow that. We had some students move in, brand new, they didn't even have the opportunity, so they took it in the fall with their other cohort classes. So that could happen as well. Yes? You would have to already be in, enrolled in the FYE before you got your scores back. So you would have to ask for me, you would have to request to be put in FYE while waiting on those scores. Okay. Yeah, we could do that. Yes. Okay, so back to grades and, and you know, being able to see the grades. Um, I'm taking classes at ECT, mm -hmm. and some of my teachers don't have the toggle set where you can see your progress grades, you know, like how you're doing in the class. Are their teachers is it kind of like standard where they have to have it toggled so you can see what your grade is through the course? The ones that teach in our building, yes. Okay. We have a great relationship with them, easy communication. Once they're over there, it's a little, it's, it is, but again, most of those professors have been really good about, oh, I didn't know that was off, or, right. and, and so it's just a matter of communicating, and so sometimes it's like I can send an email to that professor, I'm like, hey, can you turn this, this on so they can see, right. or can you help me? I mean, there is one professor over there we deal with right now in the biology department that his grades are different. And so we, I sit down with students sometimes weekly and we mathematically figure up what their grade is because it's not there. Right. And so we, we just, we do it. But, um, and we've just learned that that's him. So, yeah. yes. <laughs> Reading Coyote 20. Okay, thank you. Yes? So before they switched over, they already took the pay. You guys accepted that that's still okay, but with the test, they were already accepted the test. If they already took the TABE, I don't know. <laughs> so I don't know when they switched. Cause like I said, I just found out from the assessment center today that they switched to AccuPlacer. So I, let, me, let me find out. So if, if they already have a tape score coming in and they've had some dual credit, then maybe then that they're good. Well, he was already accepted to the academy, but Based on that tape score. Yeah, let me, let, sure yeah. Sure, let me, let me check. I would assume, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming at this point that he's good. Because I would nothing would have drew me in to go back and ask that again. I'll be honest. I wouldn't. I would have just already had him on an accepted list and move forward. So let me just ask and find out. So yes, sir. So when they get to ACT, how long does it take the students to get the scores back to the Uh It's usually two weeks. Yeah, they're 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 so much faster than they've ever been. About two weeks now. Yep. Yes. I have a few questions. Okay. First one is um, when we take this summer class, then we're going to be notified before we pay for it, and everything is going to be on a remind, yes, and he's going to get his schedule, uh, you all are going to work with him on a schedule, he's coming in personally to do that, or that's another one of those remind things? It'll come on remind. Okay. Yeah. The, the initial part for the schedule, they won't necessarily need to come in. They'll just, they'll, they'll get a remind with a Google form that they'll fill out, and they'll tell us what they want as far as... It'll be, are you, do you want multiple English classes this year, such as 101 and 102? Do you want multiple math classes this year, such as 150 and 155, or statistics? Which so science do you want? Are be spring and fall when we the first, all the decisions will be based on the fall first. Okay. That'll be the first decision that they'll make about the fall. And so, but if they want to be more math focused, and he wants multiple math classes this year, then we must put him in math in the fall. Right. If he wants more of an English focus and he wants English 101, then he has to have English in the fall. So we, so some of those questions, and then whenever else he has psychology, those don't necessarily, he doesn't get to decide that necessarily. Because so. we do four, because that's the full time? You'll do four? five classes in the fall and five in the, right. five in the fall or five in the spring, and, mm -hmm. and then four will be the opposite. So because you have FYE is one, uh -huh. so then one of the two semesters you need four, and the other semester you need five. 
so that you have 10 over the year between summer, fall, and spring. Okay. That makes sense? It's, yeah. a little it's a little complicated. That's why I didn't really kind of go into it because I was like, what? Hold on, five, what, four, what? So you take the one in the summer, that's three college credit hours. So let's say in the fall you do four. So after the fall semester, you've got 15. And then the spring, you're going to take five, so you get your other 15. The goal is that you maintain 15, in a sense, per semester, so you can get to the 60 for the associate's degree. Okay. So it's, it's kind of 15 to finish is what a lot of people call it. Because that's a total of 60? 60 is the associate's degree. Yes. Uh, at 11.45, if they're finished and lunch is at 12, then how do you eat lunch if the bus is here to pick you up, take you back to... Bus comes at 12.40. 12.40. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear that part. Yeah, I didn't give that part. <laughs> um, I got you. 11.45, done with classes, lunch at 12. Then the bus comes at 12.40 to take them back for fourth and fifth period if they're going back. And then the, the new come. So. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. That's it. All right. Yes. Oh. I, I just wanted to clarify something. Uh, so you mentioned the main classes that are scheduled, like the math and English mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, but then the additional classes that are required, is that something that we schedule ourselves on that doc you mentioned when that comes through? You, the only, you'll tell us about English and math and your science, and everything else we plan for you. Okay. Yeah. So the additional ones that are yeah, for this, For the fall and the spring, we'll help you plan all of those. There will be some room at times for you to pick the one. Like there may be, if, if you only end up with three and you need one more and we need to put like a, a nutrition or criminal justice or something like that, then we'll help you. You'll get to tell us what you want and we'll add it. But uh, yeah, you get some say so. I don't want to sit there and say you don't get, you get some say so during your junior year. It's this time during your junior year when you get a lot of say so in planning for the fall of your senior year. Okay. Yeah. They just did that. Lauren and her team were just here doing scheduling with them and their, their minds are blown a little bit because you then have to start making a lot of decisions about where you think you want to go to school and then trying to match up what that degree program looks like and then starting to pick classes for your senior year that help you to get to that degree major. So that's where they're, it gets a little more complicated. And we have a lot of very personal conversations about the classes for students. And so this is, this is the fast track. I, I tell people this all the time. It's the fast track a little bit because you are making faster decisions about potential careers. And so, and parents, I'll just tell you, again, in my house, I have a good example. My daughter was nursing all the way through and graduated high school and went to WKU and got accepted to nursing school and then changed her mind after the first semester there. And so she's accounting, same, same thing. So, but she didn't lose any time. I mean, and this is the big thing I tell students because everything you're taking during these two years are what we call gen ed classes. Your 60 hours following. Now, you may get to explore here or there, and that may not help you, but you're not losing any time ever. So, yes? So, the timing of getting into this program is still confusing. If um, she hasn't been accepted yet, and we still need to meet a benchmark, so she doesn't have this ID number needed to take the Coyote test, but we, we need to apply for the summer school before we're in, yeah, so what I would do first, what I would do, North Arden, yeah. contact Mr. Kraft, and let's do your coyote there first. Okay. Let's try that one. So if all you need is math, then let's take your coyote algebra with Mr. Kraft, figure out a good time to take it, take it there. If something happens and you don't get it there, then we pursue the next one, which would be is to apply for summer, get that ID number, then use that ID number with a photo ID and a, go to ECTC to take a placement exam. If we need to do it after that, then we'll, we'll cross that bridge. But yeah, we can still sign up for FYE and we can sign you up before the June if we're still waiting on a test. We can get you signed up for FYE because you're like, ultimately, I still want it. I, I, I'm, I think I'm going to get there eventually. We can get you into that program regardless of being accepted into this program. They don't, they're not changing their cost rate or anything because of us. It's just the way it is. But you can do some coyote testing at a high school. Yes, Mr. Kraft, Mrs. Cobb, and uh, Ms. Wooden will all give it to them at least once there. Okay. So, and mo I'll be honest, most of the people that go in and take it, you know, if you're doing well in your, your Algebra 2 class right now, you're probably going to be able to go in. Because that's the good thing about the coyote algebra versus the ACT math. It's just algebra. So 
most students typically do better just on that, whereas the ACT has trig and algebra and geometry and so on. So. Can I get statement test for reading, right? He doesn't offer the reading. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so you need to apply to ECTC for the summer. <laughs> now, get that KCTS ID number, contact ECTC, set up an appointment to go take that. In the meantime, before you go, I would try to find some, some reading stuff to tune up on. Okay. CERT, you have your CERT test, the reading portion on that, work on some of that, study stuff there. So, then go. Yeah, sorry. Any other questions? Tyler, we can shut off if you want.